two bounty hunters at the top of their game. People sometimes think that all bounty hunting is the same. No, there's skip tracing and there's bounty hunting. This is bounty hunting. Don't f around here. Partner, don't f around. Partner, don't f around. Short on time. We gotta get on that plane tonight. They will go anywhere. They're this close. Halfway around the world. There's not many people that are gonna come find you over there. Oh my god! Get out of here! If you run from us, we're gonna get you there. The ultimate manhunt begins. He is a fugitive! You're not scared of You offend me when you lie to me. This is the tip of the iceberg. And failure? That's what I'm saying! I need to act. I'm a grown man. Is not an option. Turn around! Get on the ground! Hurry up! It's kind of a half to situation. Leonard Padilla and Rob Dick are two of the most successful bounty hunters working in the nation today. The magic word is think. You have to be able to think, and you can't let any adversity uh, deny you the capture. This team of manhunters is second to none in their ability to locate and capture some of the most elusive fugitives. And it doesn't come cheap. This here is where the tough ones, the impossible ones, end up. The ones where somebody says, hey, I got 10 days, I got 30 days, I got 15 days. Uh, one bail agent comes in here and he throws it on the table. And I told him, it's gonna cost you 40% because you waited to the last two weeks. Because I have to mobilize people, I have to spend money to get in two weeks done what he couldn't get done in 50 weeks. When someone is arrested, provided it's not a capital offense, they generally have the right to bail out of jail. The most common way is to hire a bail bondsman. If the defendant misses a court date, they become a wanted person. The bail bondsman hires bounty hunters to find and arrest the individual. Bounty hunters are not associated with law enforcement. Nonetheless, they have the right to follow wanted people across state lines, break and enter their homes, and arrest them at any time. Leonard and Rob assemble a team to aid them in the challenging task of locating and arresting two wanted fugitives, both of whom they have only weeks to find. In this situation, the two individuals that we're looking for uh, are already on their second 180-day uh, extension. In other words, the first one, we've got less than two weeks left. The second one, we got about four weeks left. The first fugitive missed court 11 months ago and is running from multiple felony charges, including unlawful sex with a minor. His bail is $35,000. Leonard briefs the team. A couple weeks ago, Bondsman contacted us. He's got uh, on the run, uh, been running now about 11 months, so he's got less than 30 days left. The hunt begins in the hills above Oroville, California, over an hour's drive north of Sacramento. Yeah, we're gonna go up here and check the last known address on record of him. I don't think it's any good, but, you know, we got to turn over every rock. Defendants will often give old or wrong addresses on their bail applications. But Leonard knows that you have to start somewhere. On a case like this, I find it hard to believe that he would still be around the area. But you got to check the area because it's a lot easier. It would be just so much easier if we could find him here in Oroville. The team is having difficulty even locating the physical address. Right now we're trying to find this address and these things up in these mountains are just like, I mean, a guy will go to the end of a small road or a trail and just put up a sign and that's his address. So, But uh, the computer locator says that that address is, is right here in this area. But as you can see, there's uh, it doesn't seem to be anything here in the form of a building or anything. You know the Yeah, 
Yeah, he said it's that flat right there. It says behind the house in the cemetery. He says it's a for sale sign. Leonard calls the property's real estate agent, hoping to obtain some more useful information. It looks like there was a house up here at one time, and it's for sale. How much are you asking for it? 158 Yeah, apparently he had something here, some kind of a building or shack or trailer. I spotted it from the, the kid. The older kid was living in it. Caught on fire. Oh, really? Yeah. Burnt down. They find nothing more on the property than some old sneakers. So Rob questions the former neighbors to see if they can shed some light on the fugitive's whereabouts. I wanted to see if we could talk to you about your neighbor who used to live there. Down on the flat? Yeah. Been gone a while? Quite a while. Yeah. Kind of flat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing but trouble. Right. Yeah, they were spun out on crank all the time. Over there. Yeah. It was a real mess. The last rumors I heard uh, was he was in some other country surfing or something. Some other country? I think in his mind, he thinks the farther he goes, the less chance we're going to go after him. But to us, it doesn't matter where you go. We're going to come get you. Surfing in another country. Well, but see, he said that was over a year ago, so he doesn't know if that's, if that's any good. You don't think he can go back to surfing in another country? The team fears that the fugitive may have fled the country. They move on to the co-signer's house to try and confirm what they just heard. Leonard speaks with her privately. Oh, look at that. He's talking to her, so hopefully he's getting somewhere. I mean, she's an older woman. I don't know. Maybe she's just nervous about answering the door, but I could never get her to answer the door. See, she was scared of me. That's why she wouldn't answer the door. Do you speak enough Spanish to go to Puerto Rico? Oh, damn. Huh. Not. So the, that guy was right. The hill guy was right. Surfing. The dude so was surfing. right up in the hill. Uh, he called her uh, less than a month ago from Puerto Rico. He didn't like it. He wanted money to get out of there. Where would he go? She says, Hawaii. Would be there. So, but she said, right off the bat, she's from Puerto Rico. Then she, she kind of backed off, said, no, 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 he's, he's probably not there anymore. They have just days left to find and arrest the fugitive. Yep, yep. Leonard starts to feel the heat. We're short on time. Oh. But that's why when they get an impossible one, it ends up on my desk. Most bail agents by now would have probably come to the reality, well, we're just going to pay this one off. But we'll get him. We will get him. Back in the office, Leonard immediately hits the phones, trying to confirm the co-signer's information. You know, she was telling us that he was in Puerto Rico and all that. Uh, do you think there's any truth to that? You do? OK. Uh, what do you base that on? <laughs> so you think he would still be there and not back? When an individual is uh, looking for a fugitive and you're working the phones, uh, you basically have to contact everybody and anybody that you can that might have a connection to the fugitive. Uh, you never know who's going to give you a slight hint, either uh, up front or, you know, they maybe let it slip out as to where the fugitive is headed or going or something to that effect. A tough task, and Leonard knows family members are the least likely to give up information. Very rare that they'll give up a son or a daughter. They just usually will not will not will not because their baby is innocent their baby didn't do it their baby's being framed would you hell yes <laughs> absolutely i make a living chasing people and i'm not going to make an exception for one of my kids or even rob dick over here yeah but would you have able to find rob dick absolutely hey they got strip clubs all over the world All jokes aside, they still have serious business to do. Leonard gets the tip he's been waiting for. Hello. You're not kidding? For real? 100%. Okay. 
And you know that first guy? Yeah. Supposed to be in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Guess where he's at? What, back home with mom? No. Guam. Coming up, the team travels thousands of miles for a fugitive on the run. The team is about to make a trip to Guam. But first, they go to work on their second case. James Smith, who has been on the run for seven months. Rob received a tip that points them to Hawaii. Here's another one that we're running out of time. This is James Smith. Um, he's wanted out of Yuba in Sutter counties. And all leads look like that he's staying somewhere over on the Big Island. Not really sure where, but somewhere over in the jungle, basically. So since we only got about two weeks left on him, we're going to have to head over there, too. 99% of our situations are tips. Very seldom do you stumble across somebody. It's always a tip. They're usually friends of the person that indemnified the bond. And if you get out there and you leave your business card here, you leave your card there, you start getting these calls. And they will lead oftentimes to the fugitive. You just have to pay attention as to how you get there. The team must now coordinate locating two fugitives in distant parts of the world. Rob and Leonard will make the trip to Guam, hoping to catch the first one in time to meet the rest of the team in Hawaii. It's a high pressure situation, but this is why Leonard and his team are some of the best in the business. The company that hired me and Rob, uh, they're out of time right now, so we've got about three days in which to get this guy. Otherwise, they're going to lose their $35,000 they put up for him. So it's, it's kind of a have-to situation. Guam will be new terrain for both veteran bounty hunters. They will find themselves nearly 6,000 miles away from home, with nothing to go on but an address where their fugitive is supposedly staying and without the comforts and contacts they are accustomed to. Right now we're half an hour from Guam. So we've been actually traveling for 18 hours. address turns out to be a hotel. Leonard and Rob check in and begin making plans for a big day tomorrow. Leonard uses the 18-hour time difference between Sacramento and Guam to his advantage. He begins the search at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, I was just trying to find uh, if uh, my friend is still registered with you folks. Don't ring him because I know it's early over there. I just wanted to see if he was still there. Okay, what room is he in? Do you know? 225? Leonard just ran a call into the hotel that we're staying at where he was last and asked if he's still a resident here. And they said, yeah, he's a resident. I don't know, seven doors down from us. They say uh, room 225. Now, he's not the only in the world. We're here, 225 is here. At 6 a.m., the team moves into position, waiting for the first move from room 225. Well, we're just gonna keep an eye on it for now and see what's going on. See if a girl comes out of there or if he comes out. There's a, stair a stairwell across from his room, so more than likely he's just going to come out and go down the stairs, have Leonard at the bottom of the stairs, and I was taken from behind right on the stairwell.
Excuse me, bud. Yeah. Get some idea on you. Get some idea on you. Oh, yeah. What's your idea? What's that? Huh? What's your idea? What's your name? Let me see that. What's again. your name, partner? No, let me What's see your name, that again. partner. Turn around, dude. Why? What's Turn wrong? Turn around. What's wrong? Turn around. Do you have a warrant for your arrest? What for? Don't f around here. Partner. Don't f around. I'm gonna handcuff him. We'll talk about it. As soon as I handcuff it, don't f around. Okay. I'm not the same that you think I am. There were two of us staying in this hotel. Really? Can I see the photo? There was a gentleman that stayed here before that had the same name, exact same name. I know you got this. This is this is Wayne. What are the chances of actually getting the wrong guy? 17 time zones away from where he's a fugitive. And here you've got the wrong individual with the same name. I could see getting the wrong guy because you started out after the wrong guy. But here we knew we had the right guy. We had the right name. Wow. 30 years of doing this, first time it's happened. Yeah, it's yeah, it's right. Right. yeah. <laughs> OK. Man, you're all scared as at me. No, we're not. Rob and Leonard confirmed the name mix up with the hotel staff. He was here at the same time. Because he used to get caught. People would call for the other guy, and they'd route him. He was in 237, our guy. Right, OK. Do you have any information on him that we can? On this person here? This yeah. One. It turns out that the fugitive checked out of this hotel nearly a month ago. Everything says, yeah, this is the right guy. Same name, same look, same place. But Hmm. I mean, where are we at in this? I mean, everything starts to turn upside down in a matter of seconds in your mind. You're trying to figure out, you know, what got me to here, and now where am I going to go? Rob and Leonard decide to split up and hit the streets the old-fashioned way. Rob will check car rental companies, while Leonard will check the local shops to ask if anyone has seen their man. Wear a shirt, and he comes in every two or three they days. can only hope their fugitive is still on the island. Rob returns from his search with good news. I went to mm -hmm. the guy that takes all the cars and everything. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Oh, yeah. Used to live in him. So I dropped him off there the first time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he moved. He moved. He's over here at the uh, hotel. Rob's research points the team to a different hotel a few miles away. He's right here. Hotel. Four fifteen was Thursday. This last Thursday. Yeah, he wants again pay. But he's still here. He pay again. Yeah. Okay. 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 Don't say nothing to him. Hey, don't say anything, OK? We just talked to the owner of the hotel. It's confirmed that he is in room 315 on the third floor. He uh, paid two days ago, I guess, for another 30 days. So she showed us the register, and it's him. He signed it, so he's here for sure. Rob calls the local police to ask for backup. But they are unavailable to help at this time. Most law enforcement will help us out when they can, but a lot of times their hands are tied or, or they're too short-staffed or busy and can't. And there was a point in time where we made the conscious decision that, you know, hey, we have to get him now. We can't wait for law enforcement. Well, let's just both go upstairs and stand at the end of the hallway. Me? Both of us. With no assistance from law enforcement, Leonard enlists the help of the hotel clerk, who will knock on the fugitive's door to question him about his bill. Up. Anybody else in here? Coming up, the bounty hunter's island adventure continues. Right there, right there, right there. He's here. 
Leonard and Rob are almost 6,000 miles from home. They believe they finally located the fugitive and are ready to make the arrest. Get down on, turn around, get on the ground. Hurry up, anybody else in here? Turn around, get on the ground. On your knees, on your knees. Down on, on your, your knees. knees. Down on your knees. Get down. Don't move. Okay, I'm behind your back. What's your name, guy? Okay. okay. This time, they have the right guy. Okay. All right, have a seat in here. Thanks, buddy. Here you go. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? That's what this is for? And you're going to fly me back to California? Uh, this is for I think Guam is far enough away from us over here in the States that, you know, if you're going to run over there, there's not many people that are going to come find you over there. But, I mean, if you run from us, we're going to get you there. After United States Marshals confirm the fugitive's identity and active warrants, the Guam Police Department books him. Here, he will await extradition back to California. You know, people sometimes think that uh, all bounty hunting is the same now. There's skip tracing and there's bounty hunting. This is bounty hunting when you travel halfway around the world and pinpoint an address and you go to the door and there he is. That is absolutely, positively the epitome of bounty hunting. Here you go, the victory hat. <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, feels good. Rob and Leonard take a few moments to enjoy the island paradise before they leave Guam. They don't let you go on there with a hat. They make you take your hat off. I just couldn't do it Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah, we want a few minutes of downtime just to catch up to the jet lag, but we can't relax too much. It's not a vacation. No, we, we got, got another one to get in Hawaii. We got to so. go to and to get one in Hawaii. Forty-eight hours after arriving in Guam, the hunt for a new fugitive begins. James Smith is wanted out of Sutter and Yuba counties in California for warrants totaling $50,000. On the run now for seven months, Rob has credible info that Smith is staying with friends, hiding in the jungles of Hawaii's Big Island. Well, we got Art and Steve coming in. Coming in on the plane. Art and Steve will be a tremendous help as extra eyes and ears as the team heads into the jungle location where the fugitive is apparently staying. If you take the situation as a team and uh, we go somewhere and all five of us are there, uh, we're definitely going to be able to be successful. There's no doubt in my mind that we can't find anybody that we go after and catch them too. How's it? How's it? No, I love Brian. Yeah, Brian. Rob touches base with the informant who had contacted him weeks ago. I, I'd love to take him out of here, you know, all the way back. That's my that's my intention, to find him and take him back, you know? Well, I was planning on just being here till tomorrow, but sounds like this isn't gonna be that easy now, you know? Unfortunately, the informant's story has changed. The fugitive is no longer staying with him, and he doesn't know where he is. This actually should have been relatively easy. We show up, they don't want him there. They point him out, and we take him into custody. In the meantime, he got in a fight with them, and they threw him off the property, and now he's homeless and living in the jungle. The last time the informant saw the fugitive, he was on his way to a jungle area on the island known to be popular for homeless campers. They head into the jungle to search for James Smith with what little information they have. How are we getting back?
They encounter a man who tells them that James is working for a property owner nearby, clearing brush with a chainsaw. He's working for that guy part-time. Oh, really? So he could just go down there, go inside the gate, and start working or something? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking he's doing right now. I would bet on he's that. He's not here. I'll 100% bet it because he needed work. They follow the man's direction, and sure enough, they hear a chainsaw. I'm past the house. Steve, be quiet for a minute. All right, come back here farther towards the chainsaw. Okay, we gotta try to sneak up on him. Back up, back up. That's him. That's him. Steve, can you read me? That's him. We just gotta get there. The jungle is too dense for Rob and Art to get through. The property owner who James is supposedly working for is unavailable. Rob asks a neighbor if he knows who's operating the chainsaw. Is somebody that you know running the chainsaw? I don't know, that's That's, that's Yeah. You want me to walk you over there? Yeah, just to rule it out. They said that it's all the way next door? Yeah. Well, he's running the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're busted. <laughs> <laughs> around town very much, yeah. That they all look familiar in some place back in time. Oh, so he's not hanging out here, he's hiding here. Yeah, no, he's hiding. In fact, he knows that we're after him. What was been. once a promising lead is now a dead end. He was living with his like this guy couldn't make it. The next morning, the bounty hunters meet with the informant face to face. They turn up the heat. This is, this is the tip of the iceberg. But we're trying to prevent. No, and we want you to get him. When we're we found trying to, out he was trying wanted, to prevent, he was out of here. Okay, but what we're trying to prevent is the cops doing this in about five, ten minutes. Oh my God. Okay, and you I know what? I can get in a car and go with you and try to help you find. I don't know where he is. <laughs> the informant gives the team a description of what James had been wearing and takes him to the place where he last saw James, a vacant lot he'd been hiding on after he left the informant's house. Right there, right there, right there, he's here. The items on the porch matched the description the informant had given them earlier. Leonard, do you copy me? OK, listen. We found his bag. The black duffel bag with the gray, the gray handle is here. So keep an eye on the road. We're going to keep searching down here. But he's definitely here. A duffel bag, we we're this close to him. That's definitely his bag. All we're missing is him in the backpack, which means he's just out for the day. This is where he stayed last night, and this is where he'll come back to. So what's our plan? Our plan is just to wait it out right now. He's got to come back for his bag. Nobody knows we're here, but he'll be back here. I have been sitting here for about, I want to say about better half of three hours or more. Every time you hear a leaf fall, you think it's, you know, something. And then the wind's blowing, birds is chirping, leaping out of the trees. Every time you hear something, you think it's, you know,
Rob, Art, and Steve have been waiting in the area over 10 hours for James to return for his things. The team waits past midnight and no one returns. They end another night empty-handed and with their fugitives still at large. Coming up, the search in the jungle becomes even more peculiar. All right, is Jimmy around here? Is Jimmy around here? I'm looking for Jimmy. What are you doing? Oh my God! The team catches a few hours of sleep before returning to the house before dawn. About an hour and a half before the sun comes up, we're gonna try to hit the two places that we were at yesterday where his clothes were. Hopefully he came in in the middle of the night and he's sleeping there. Hello. Hey, man. Where's Jimmy? I don't want to around. Come, let me see your hands. You see this? All right, is Jimmy around here? Is Jimmy around here? I'm looking for Jimmy. What are you doing? Oh my God! Out of here! Okay, look. See this right here? Away from me! Right there. What see that? Are you doing? See that right there? What? See that bag? What about it? What That's Jimmy's. Bags. Don't, don't play even know Jimmy. Well, he's sleeping with you or sleeping in here. What are you talking about sleeping with me? Well, how you, that's how, his bag. What right? evidence do you have? How are we, we uh, That's his bag right there, partner. You're standing in front of a guy that's completely naked. There's obviously there's no weapons there. And he, you know, you, you don't have really a threat issue of much of anything other than him jumping up and down and screaming. And then you stay right there and you say something. You I tell me, you man. Mean. You say, look, I have these rights and this is what it is. And you be more respectful. Okay, you need some time to just relax. Man. That's what I'm saying. I need time. I'm <laughs> okay. a grown man. I mean, he's just sitting there acting like an idiot. And the more he rambled, the stupider he looks. So, I, you know, whenever you're done, now we can talk about the real facts of why we're here. Look for me. Um, look for me. Just be honest, truthful. That might be that guy that looked. You see what I'm saying? He's been to the pen. He knows he's doing time. That's why he ran. That's why he ran to here. He started to calm down and actually interact in a more human relationship and talk, but he was still BSing the whole time. He lied the whole time we were there, which is, you know, it's part of the game. This is his tent. I'm gonna move it so that he can't, uh, he can't have it. I mean, you know, he wants to live in the bush, live in the bush. He's gonna be living in the bush with a tent. After days of getting nowhere, Rob's patience with his Hawaii contacts is wearing thin. Well, here's, here's, what's, here's why I'm aggravated and why I'm elevated in my voice. You're calling me two days later going, uh, we want to talk about how we uh, kind of might have lied. He was in my van that he worked on. I drove him around, and I'm not going to tell you that. We got to hear about that from everybody else. You think I'm a little bit upset that I got to go to everybody else to tell me the truth? That's a bold-faced lie. A bold-faced lie. See, more bull more bull more bull Well, here's the deal, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Your friends, your friends have lied, have harbored, have, and, and we're done with it. The team is frustrated, sleep deprived, and their leads have all but dried up. The bounty hunters are coming to terms with the fact that they may have to leave Hawaii without their man. Everybody's pretty tired. I mean, it's been a long, it's been a long week, you know, and we're running these things going back and forth. Normal people are getting to sleep a certain amount of time, and we're working at different angles at all hours of the day and night. So our sleep level's just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping until the point where we're, we're just we're running out of juice. What happens sometimes is you just work yourself into a frustration, you tire yourself, you overburden your brain, and sometimes you actually have to take a break from a situation. The fact that we're, you know, four or 5,000 miles away from home makes it a little difficult to look at and say, hey, we're gonna have to go to Sacramento and then come back out here. But that's what you have to do sometimes. There's no, no way around it. The team calls it quits for now, heading back home to Sacramento.
Back in the office, Leonard continues to work the phones on the fugitive. Rob spends the day teaching students at the Bounty Hunter School he and Leonard co-founded. Being real, I mean, this looks like a real gun. Well, we've been talking about it for years, and we've finally been able to put together a, a training program and facility to train other bounty hunters. One essential element of training is to understand the many tools bounty hunters use. Yeah, today is taser day, and everybody in the class has to actually take the ride of the five-second taser. Um, one of the main reasons to do that is so that you yourself know the full effects of it. It'll seem like it's an hour, but it's only five seconds. Just breathe. Everybody ready? Ready? Yep. Taser, taser, taser. Get that out of me. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, straighten this leg up. With me, with now almost 17 years of experience, you know, I've never been sued. I've never had to take a life. And for the most part, I don't think I've ever been hurt. Um, a lot of that has to do with training, being very good at what you do. And now if I can give that to someone else so that they can continue on and maybe do the same things, you know, that's great. Over the years, Leonard has learned to think like the fugitives he's chasing. James Smith is no different. He's creating his own prison. It's a portable prison he's in. Every time he hears a police siren, every time he sees a black and white, he's jumpy. Every time he sees a stranger looking at him, he's jumpy, you know, he's just... He's going to die of an ulcer before he's much older. I mean, he's creating a hell on earth for himself. If I can do that. A call comes in that could break the case wide open. Where, where in uh, Paradise Park? No, that I understand. How many days did he work for you? The last day that we were there, we laid a flyer on a, a place where we thought somebody had said he was working. And then today we're sitting around getting ready to call it a day and the guy that's actually working on that uh, house calls. Says, yeah, he's working for me. Matter of fact, he's staying with me right now. Uh, he says he found the flyer. He says he called the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office looked it up and gave him the phone number for the bail agent. OK, but where's he going to sleep tonight? There. That mm -hmm. We got to get on that plane tonight. The call is enough for Rob and Kevin to drop everything and fly back to Hawaii in an attempt to capture elusive fugitive James Smith. I think we do. Coming up, will the team finally capture James Smith, or is their new lead another dead end? The next morning, the team gets ready and rushes to get into position. It's about 5.45 a.m. Hawaii time. Now we're going to put on our vests and our belts and get ready to get this guy. I mean, he is facing 13 years after all. Rob and Kevin drive to the house where the informant has told them James is staying. All they need to make their move is a call from Leonard confirming the fugitive's location. Hello. He's asleep on the couch at 15. He's asleep on the couch at the house. Oh, really? Yeah. Ready? Ready. The fugitive just happens to be walking out the front door as the team arrives, and he quickly darts back inside the house. There he is. There he is. The team follows.
After two trips to Hawaii, the manhunt is finally over. James Smith is in custody. Well, no, he's on the board, was he? <laughs> I was going down to grab my stuff, man, and I seen you guys. I was gonna run out the back door, and then I was like, no, this is pointless. You know what I mean? It really is, I don't wanna run. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna be running. Leonard talks to James about his case and offers his help. Here, I'll hold away, Yeah. Man, I'm you to you Hannah, ooh, Leonard, I need help, man. That's all I... Here's what I'll do when you get back here. I'll have to get an attorney to help you and another one to help with the kids. All right, man. You know what? Praise God, because that's all I want. The uh, thing with your wife. Yes, sir. I smacked her, yes I did smack her, and I smacked her in front of my kids, and I'll never live that down, but I didn't do anything other than that. <laughs> I think Jimmy was a personification of people that just kind of create a problem for themselves somewhere on the mainland, and they go there. Whether it's a busted up personal life, or whether it's a criminal background, who knows what it is, but that's why they're there. They just want to get away from something or somebody. You've been on the road for how long now? Seven months. I know. I just want to go to work, man. That's all. I just want to go to work so I can do what I need to do for myself and my kids. I mean, you, you can't help your kids on the road. I know that. Listen, the running is a lot harder than doing time. When you're on the run, there's no way your loved ones are happy. There's no way they're content. There's no way they're settled down. They're always on edge. The people that really care about you. If you're sitting in a jail, they can write you. They can call you. You can call them. You can visit. They know where you're at. Hell, I don't know that any of Jimmy's relatives love him or care about him, but if there's one out there that cares and loves him, they don't have a clue from day to day where he's at or what he's doing. He might fall off one of those rock cliffs over there in Hawaii and they'd never hear from him again, the sharks that eat. You can't run forever, man. That's all there is to it. The chase is over. Rob doesn't waste any time to finally enjoy the island's offerings. Beach time, baby. What if uh, Leonard calls while you're at the beach? Are you still gonna run? There's no phone service down on the beach. Coincidentally, I mean, he knows that. Back home, Leonard doesn't care that he wasn't present for the arrest. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, God, I want to be there when the cuffs are put on. You know, I want to be there when this, I want to be there when that. Let me tell you, I want to be there when a check hits the table, when the mail comes in. That's the important thing about what we're doing. This, uh, you know, badge-heavy, satchel-ass attitude of, I'm going to put the cuffs on. By God, you know, I want to be there. No, that's not the most important thing. If you do that, you'll get sidetracked. You have to keep in mind, we're doing it for pay. The pay is the important thing. That's it. At 68, he considers his legacy as a career bounty hunter. I don't want to die laying in bed, you know, with a bunch of people hanging around. You know, if, 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 if it came to that or getting shot out in the field, you know, capturing somebody, uh, you know, shoot me out in the field capturing somebody. But I don't want to die of old age or, or uh, you know, a bunch of people hanging around the bed, you know, twisting the rosary beads. That's not my idea of... Uh, of who I am. So many people don't understand him, don't know where he's coming from, think things that they've heard, rumors, you know, take on a, a life of their own, and he's bigger than life sometimes to people. But I think as long as he can pick up a phone and dial a number, he's still gonna be working by me. I've had people that uh, say, well, you've created this aura of invincibility around you. And I think they've always thought that, you know, Guy's bigger than life. He can walk on water. He'll survive anything. And that's basically the way it's been. <laughs>